Hello everyone! Uh, while we're enjoying the snooze fest in London, uh, as today is a rest day, I thought it'd be a very nice idea uh, to check up on uh, a very nice Blitz game, uh, as so many of you have suggested it. Uh, we have to go some 8,000 kilometers all the way from London to Kolkata, uh, as there the Tata Steel Chess India Blitz Tournament 2018 is being held, and we have uh, a game between uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda uh, and Vishwanathan Anand, and it is their first ever encounter over the board. Uh, so I decided to name the video First Contact, you know, maybe uh, maybe kind of draw a parallel there uh, between uh, Star Trek's First Contact, because uh, here uh, Pragnananda uh, improved so much and he has made so much progress uh, that he uh, is now contacted by much stronger grandmasters and organizers uh, to play in these events. So here uh, it's gonna be uh, a really, really uh, an exciting game, and uh, I'm sure Anand uh, really also feels the pressure as he wants to leave uh, as good uh, as impression as possible. Uh, he knows that uh, he is a role model to every young grandmaster and international master in India who wants to make a name for uh, for for himself. Uh, so uh, definitely he's going to take this game very seriously, and he does, which, which you will see. Uh, before we check out the actual game, I just do have one very exciting. Uh, well, drawing to share with you. Uh, a subscriber sent me this, uh, and uh, this was drawn by his six-year-old daughter. Now, it doesn't seem like much, uh, unless you know what's uh, happening here. Uh, these two goats, and they are in fact the goats, I have confirmation they are goats, uh, are actually Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Corwana. On the left, you can see it actually says Magnus Carlsen, uh, but you, ha you have to read it from bottom to top. So there you have it, Magnus Carlsen. And uh, in the in the little uh, cloud in there, it says uh, in the bubble it says uh, Avin, but what it, what it actually means is I win. And the other guy is uh, uh, Karwana, and he says Oh no! So uh, did the little girl, the six-year-old girl, predict the outcome of the uh, 2018 World Chess Championship? Only time will tell. Uh, but you know, ch it really, children are fascinating. How how does she see Carlson and Karwana as two goats? Uh, is beyond me, but still a very impressive drawing. So I do hope you enjoyed that. Now let's check out this very nice game. Uh, Pragnananda opens with e4, and we have c5 by Anand. So already you can see that Anand is very interesting, uh, interested in a fight. Uh, Anand being one of the greatest uh, Sicilian players uh, of, of today. Uh, Pragnananda, of course, knows that, and surely he came very prepared. Uh, knight to f3, d6, d4, c captures on d4. Uh, let me just fix that. Uh, knight captures on d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, and a6. Uh, we, of course, have the knight of variation on the board, and, uh, well, w what could be more exciting than a knight of Sicilian? Uh, and here, a3, uh, a move that uh, became popular uh, only recently. Also, I've seen h3 being played in this game. Uh, none of the older lines are really very much popular with white, uh, but it's actually a, a very useful move. Uh, I... I I do play it now, but before it always seemed like a, a huge waste of a tempo. Uh, but if you think about it, Black will always want to develop his pieces, especially with b5, bishop to b7, and at some point he will want to push b4. So playing a3, uh, you know, does make sense. Uh, and <laughs> I remember a lot of games where uh, I was constantly calculating, what if I push g5 and he pushes b4? I do this, he does that, I do this, he does that, and, uh, you know, always spent a lot of time on this. So, a3, uh, right off the start, and uh, let's see what happens next. Uh, Anand decides to play g6, we have bishop to e2, and the bishop to g7, fiancaroing the bishop. Uh, also, uh, I don't want to forget it, uh, by the end of the video, uh, in the description below, the first thing you will see is a link to this exact game uh, on Chessbase India's channel, where you can watch the actual footage of the game. It's really exciting, so do check it out. Uh, bishop to e3, uh, we have castles, queen to d2. Now, uh, <clears throat> Pragnananda has this queen-bishop battery. Uh, at some point, he will want to exchange uh, the dark square bishop uh, by playing bishop to h6. Uh, we have b5 by Anand, uh, continuing with the usual knight of stuff. Uh, queenside castle and now bishop to b7, uh, Anand now has a double attack against the e4 pawn uh, with the knight and the bishop here. Uh, so Pragnananda uh, defends it, we have f3, and now having this very nice central structure, uh, he will want to start pushing h4 and g4, uh, as it, that's what you want to do when black has a fianchettoed uh, 
uh, bishop and this structure on the king's side. Uh, we have knight bd7 by Anand. This knight can now either come into the game via b6, c5, e5, e5 uh, depending on what vi white plays. Uh, we have h4, of course, you want to attack on the king's side, and we have knight to e5. Uh, we have bishop to h6, Pragnananda wants to exchange dark square bishops. Uh, we have bishop captures, queen captures, uh, and here rook to c8. And here it's a very... Uh, there's a lot of tension here. You have to calculate a lot of things. Uh, of course, uh, Anand uh, will have to calculate what happens if h5 is played. And it's very interesting here, uh, Prague will play the g4, and he gave up uh, uh, a crucial tempo to Anand uh, after this g4. Uh, Anand played rook captures on c3, and then uh, the entire game became uh, something that, uh, well... <laughs> resembles a blitz game of course uh, but it's very interesting h5 uh, is the better idea here than the g4 Pragnananda played and it's very interesting if you like ask me does uh, Pragnananda have all the variations up until move 14 uh, about the knight of Sicilian in his head I would most likely say yeah I'm sure he does uh, I mean he's uh, such a young grandmaster surely uh, he has all of it in his head uh, but it seems that uh, you know Chess being such a, such a wonderful thing, uh, it, it is impossible to have everything. And it's uh, not all that uh, easy to see why uh, h5 is much better. Well, uh, of course, if you play g captures on h5, we'll, 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 you don't want to play this. Uh, you give up the f5 square. Then knight, knight f5 is winning. Uh, queen g7, the threat of checkmate. Uh, after you block it, now rook captures on h5. Uh, there is no defense against uh, both uh, queen captures on h7, and even if you prevent this, then queen g7 will again be checkmate. Uh, but even without ruining your pawn structure, you could capture with the knight, for example, knight captures on h5. Uh, but again, rook captures on h5. And after you capture, again, knight to f5, and again, uh, there is no way to defend the g7 square. Queen to g7 will be checkmate. So h5, uh, a very dangerous move, uh, and if uh, Anand would play rook captures on c3 now, uh, then uh, he, he doesn't really have time for this, because if uh, h5 was played instead of g4, then you get h captures on g6. Uh, h captures, uh, f captures on g6, you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to allow uh, the f5 square for white's knight, so you do have to block it, and you cannot capture with the h pawn, because queen to h8 will be checkmate. So here, but now, knight e6 wins, you don't need the f5 square anymore, uh, as uh, there is the threat of checkmate, and if you block it, uh, you will lose the queen on c8. Uh, so a lot of very uh, <laughs> cool ideas here. Uh, and lastly, uh, but of course not leastly, after h5, uh, queen to a5, also getting the queen out of the way, so ideas with knight to e6 will not be possible. Uh, again, f4 will be uh, extremely w good for wh uh, for white. Now, after rook captures on c3, you will play g captures, uh, h captures on g6, of course, and after pawn captures, now you will capture on e5. And now, uh, we enter this very nice variation of rook captures on a3, <clears throat> where black would be threatening checkmate as the queen is controlling the d2 square. Uh, you would have to capture it, but after queen captures, king moves, queen b4 check, knight will block with b3. Uh, then comes d captures on e5, but still uh, white will be white will be much better here. Uh, he's up a whole rook, and even though black does have some counterplay uh, with king b2 and the rook to a1, uh, white should have no problems winning this. So very interesting. Uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to, just to show it, uh, as I mean it's a position that can very well uh, happen in in a lot of your games where you have to decide whether you want to prepare h5 or you just want to push it immediately and if you if you see uh, that you might uh, have a lot of use for this uh, uh, f5 square or even the e6 square uh, perhaps you will find the h5 move in your own games uh, because it's um, different because the exchange happened i mean of course if you have a uh, queen d2 and bishop e3 battery, you will always play bishop to h6, that's normal. Uh, but most of the times it's actually white who will capture on g7 with the bishop and king captures. It's a very rare that black will actually capture the bishop on h6 and allow queen captures on h6, which is what Anand played here. So, a bit different, but uh, that that is why uh, h5 is possible here. Uh, but okay, g4 was played by Prago, and now rook captures on c3, uh, Anand now captures it. Now, there is nothing to capture on the king's side, as g4 was, of course, slower than h5. b captures on c3, and now queen to a5. And uh, know that this is a blitz game, so, of course, no one will find all, all of the lines uh, over the board. 
uh, with queen to a5, and now Prague doesn't even bother playing king to b2 to defend his pawns, uh, as here Anand would gain a lot of momentum, rook to c8 to go after the c3 pawn, and then uh, Prague's attack is over, he has to bring the queen back, and even though this might be better, uh, Prago decides to give us uh, a very exciting game and he decides to go all out. So after uh, Anand's queen to a5, Prago goes knight to f5. Already Prago is threatening queen g7 checkmate. Uh, of course you have to capture the knight, g captures on f5, g captures on f5, now opening up the g file, and now comes queen captures on c3. Uh, here there is uh, there is an even stronger move, but uh, I mean it's it's really an engine move, and uh, to find such a move in a blitz game would be uh, would not be possible, I'd say. But uh, you could play something like rook e g four, a knight e g four. Sorry, uh, give back the piece, and now uh, you will either have a very strong knight on uh, on g four. Uh, on the other hand, if you capture it, then you get knight captures on e four. The g file is closed. You are still controlling the d two square. Queen captures on a three is coming, and it will be. Uh, it will be a very strong game for black, uh, if if not winning. Uh, but okay, after g captures on f5, Anand's idea is very much similar. Uh, he first plays queen captures on c3, uh, and now comes rook d to g1. Now Anand decided to close the g file uh, the other way. He, he decides to give up the extra piece by playing knight to g6. Uh, we have pawn captures. Uh, here, Anand thought about uh, does he capture with the h-pawn or does he capture with the f-pawn. He decided to go with the f-pawn, uh, and here we have h5. And this is the moment where Prago simply allows uh, Anand too much. Uh, the problem is, and I was, uh, I was when I was watching this game on Chess Base India channel, uh, I was uh, always considering this knight captures an e4 move, and I, I knew that there is a problem with the e4 pawn. So I didn't know what the correct move here is. Uh, most likely h5 is <laughs> what I would play as well. Uh, but uh, bishop to d3, you have to reinforce this e4 pawn and not allow uh, any captures uh, towards the pawn. Uh, but okay, uh, we have uh, h5 here and here. Uh, very interestingly, I thought that knight captures on e4 wins for black because now the d2 square is covered and queen to a1, the threat of checkmate, will be overwhelming. Uh, because now after pawn captures, bishop captures, there's really no good way to prevent queen captures on c2 checkmate. And also the bishop from here uh, guards the g6 square, so no rook g6 ideas are possible here. Uh, and of course, if you try to defend it with queen d2, then you take away the d2 square from white's king, queen a1 will be checkmate. Uh, and then I was really surprised when instead of knight captures on e4, <laughs> Anand actually played bishop captures on e4. Uh, but okay, then I realized that after knight captures on e4, you don't have to capture it. Uh, rather, uh, instead of capturing, you can just uh, give up the rook. Rook captures on g6. And now after pawn captures, queen captures with check. Uh, queen, have to, queen has to block, otherwise you have a, uh, otherwise you have a, a checkmate if you go king to h8. Uh, then queen to h6, and uh, you will get checkmated here uh, after queen to g6 checkmate. Uh, but uh, after this knight captures, uh, rook captures on g6, uh, we have pawn captures, queen captures, and now queen to g7. Uh, now you would get simply pawn captures on e4. Queen captures, uh, pawn captures, and now after bishop captures on e4, most likely rook to h7 attacking the e7 pawn, and after e5, Black would still be better, but it's hard to say if this is actually winning. Most likely it's not. So that's why Anand finds uh, the absolute best move after h5, not uh, the one I thought that was good, knight captures on e4, but bishop captures on e4. Uh, now comes f captures on e4. Prago has to do this uh, because Anand uh, saw that after you defend checkmate, because there is a threat of checkmate here, bishop to d1 uh, would uh, could be played to defend it. But now you have uh, a lot of other problems. Queen captures on a3 check. Uh, king moves and now comes the bishop captures on f3, simply attacking that uh, rook on h1. Uh, and also uh, the bishop on d1. So after bishop captures, queen captures, uh, there are no tricks anymore with rook captures on, B uh, on g6. So h captures, uh, now comes knight to e4 check, and now uh, white is getting checkmated after a, a very nice king walk. King c1, queen a3 check. Uh, if you go king b1, you get knight to c3 checkmate. And if you try to go to the other way, as the d2 square is covered by the knight, king d1. Uh, then you get queen a1 check, king moves, and now rook to f2 check. The knight from e4 is, of course, uh, protecting the rook. King d3, queen c3 check, you give up the knight, king captures, and now after queen f3 check, king d4, e5 will be checkmate. 
uh, as uh, the pawn and the queen are covering all of the light squares here and the queen is of course cutting off the, the entire uh, third rank here uh, as you can see. Uh, so, uh, after bishop captures on e4, the very nice move, Anand found, uh, Prago decided to capture it. Uh, so, we have, uh, sorry about that, uh, after bishop captures uh, on e4, uh, Prago decided to capture it, uh, f, cap f captures on e4, and now comes queen to a1 check. Not even preparing it with knight captures on e4, uh, preparing checkmate, because now white would actually win. After rook captures on g6, you would again face this exact same checkmate. Queen h6, king g8, rook g1 check, uh, and queen to g6 will be checkmate. Uh, so, uh, after this, f captures on e4, queen to a1 check immediately by Anand. We have king to d2, and only now knight captures on e4. Uh, queen to e th uh, king to e3, and now you are Anand here, continue this king hunt. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out how to continue this attack. Uh, I will give you a couple of seconds as usual. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are uh, an excellent king hunter. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, queen to c3 check. You give up the knight on e4. Uh, and the problem is with capturing the knight, which was not played in the game, that now d5 wins. King captures and now the rook can also join the king hunt. A king goes back, now comes rook to d4 check. King e5, now uh, you always know when the king starts coming up the board that it's all over. Queen c5 check, king moves, and queen to d6 will be checkmate. Uh, so, after queen to c3 check, uh, bishop to d3 was played by Prago, uh, but now you face uh, a lot of other problems. Now you can see uh, the relationship between the black queen and the white queen. So, Anand simply played queen to d2 check. Uh, now the knight has to be captured, king captures, and now comes queen captures on h6. Uh, and But all, okay, although white lost the queen, uh, it's a blitz game, it's still very much possible, but Prago was a very, very long time here. He only had a few seconds on the clock, uh, and he fought valiantly here, and he even created uh, some chances, uh, which you will see. H captures on g6, now the black queen is attacked. Uh, we have queen to f4 check first, getting out of the way, uh, king to d5, and now h6, closing up the file. Uh, and the queen is guarding the h6 pawn. Uh, g7 attacking the rook. We have rook to c8, taking away the c file uh, from white's king. Uh, king to e6, and now d5, preparing queen to d6 check. But Prago doesn't allow it. We have rook to g6. Uh, rook to c6 check. Uh, we have king captures on e7, and uh, here rook captures on g6. Here, uh, Prago was, uh, I think he, Prago was down to 3 seconds here, and Anand misses a queen to f7 check. After king to d8, rook to c7 will uh, threaten both of these checkmates, but uh, uh, there's no reason to find it, as Prago is so much very low on time. But uh, also, uh, it could have uh, gone uh, differently, you know, it could have been uh, really dangerous, as even with a few, only a few seconds on the clock, uh, Prago still managed to create one very nice uh, trap. Uh, Rook captures on g6 was played by Anand, bishop captures on g6, king captures on g7, and now bishop back to d3. So still you have a protected bishop on d3, and the rook can uh, the rook can create uh, some problems. Uh, queen e5 check, king d7, and now h5, starting to push the pass pawn. Also, the pawn on h5 is now protected by the black queen. Rook g1 check, king f6, rook g6 check, king f7, uh, rook to h6, and now a5. Uh, we have king to c6, now b4, we have captures, captures, and now king back to d7 by Prago. Uh, king to g7, attacking the rook, uh, we have rook to e6, attacking black queen, uh, queen, d queen d4, uh, and here we have king to e8. And uh, here, again, Prago was constantly playing with his increment. Uh, again, he was, uh, I think it was around 3 or 5 seconds here, uh, but uh, like I said, you do have... Uh, uh, a video uh, containing the actual footage of the game, so do, do check it out. Uh, but here, if Anand uh, just continued, for example, pushing his pass pawn, then it would have been enough to draw the game, because uh, here, Prago prepared rook g6 check, and now if you go rook, uh, king h7, rook uh, to g4 check, opens up a check from the bishop, and also wins the queen here, so you would either have to move the king and allow rook captures queen, or give up the queen for the bishop, uh, for the pawn, uh, and now this would be even worse, as white would be even winning now. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, of course, you will not, if you already blunder like this, you will not go king h7, but king h8, and then, of course, you have to allow a perpetual here. Uh, and that draw by repetition. Uh, so after king e8, queen g4 was played. Uh, now, 
Although you can uh, capture the queen here uh, if you play something like this, but uh, then again, you're up three pawns and uh, it's an easily winning endgame. Uh, so after queen to g4, uh, Prago tried king to e7, but now comes uh, h4. Uh, we have bishop to e2, queen g5 check, king d6, and now h3. Uh, rook to e7 check, king to f8, we have rook to e5 attacking the queen, and now uh, rook, uh, queen to f6 check. Uh, we have king captures on d5, and now after h2, uh, uh, <laughs> Pragnananda deci uh, decided to resign the game. Uh, as there is nothing more he can do here, uh, at some point black can e even capture here on e5, and after king captures promote into a queen, uh, you cannot uh, prevent uh, the pawn from queening, bishop to f3, the queen will simply capture it, so nothing more to be done here. Uh, if... Uh, something like rook h5 to protect the pawn, then queen f7 check, king moves, and even queen captures. After bishop captures again, you will get uh, a queen into the game, and again, uh, a very nice winning uh, game for Anand. So yeah, king captures on d5, h2. Uh, it was in this position that uh, Pragnananda resigned the game, and this, uh, their, <laughs> the first encounter of these two uh, uh, great grandmasters uh, ended by Anand winning the game. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure uh, Pragnananda is very happy with his game, but uh, I'm sure he he really really wanted to win this one. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I I think it's kind of a refreshing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to see uh, a nice blitz game. Even though it's a blitz game, but maybe with uh, the maybe with the dry games in the World Chess Championship, we are facing. You know, it's 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 nice to check up on a game like this. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Thomas Keating, uh, Vladimir Horvat, Jonathan Blakes, uh, Anton Komiza, and Filip Milkovic for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting content. And if by any chance you have more interesting drawings, such as these two goats, which represent uh, champion and challenger, you know, also do share so we can share it with everyone. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.